Oh yeah, you know what time it is. Hello everybody, so I am doing a, my first ever in fact, custom keyboard build. The last keyboard video you saw from me was not actually a fully custom board, it was kind of a uh, pre-packaged board and set up from uh, Drop. And so this is actually my first full, like, I've chosen all of the parts type of keyboard. And I've purchased everything from KBD fans, I got it on the Black Friday sale. Um, and so basically I've just purchased everything I've needed for this build, so um, without further ado I'll just take everything out of the package so you can see what we got. We got MX Brown switches. We have Tex ADA keycaps with the film novelties, I'll show you what I mean later. We have the DZ60 RGB board. This is not the ANSI layout. And finally, it has nothing on the packaging, but this is the uh, bamboo 60% case that I chose for it with a carbon fiber back plate for the DZ60. So um, let me take a cut here and I will get everything out on the desk in front for you. All right, let me preface with saying everything you see here will be linked down in the description and I'm going to point to each one and show you in detail what each thing is so that you can make sure you, if you're trying to do a similar build or same build, you can pick everything out the way I have it seen here. So first off, I have the Tex ADA keycaps. So these are um, just black and white keycaps. They come as a unique set though because you can add on the film novelty set. And so these keycaps actually resemble um, components of, a cam of cameras. And so you can have a um, sort of photography themed keyboard build, which is what I was going for. Next up we have the, uh, these are actually Gateron brown switches, pretty much the same, they're cherry clones. And I put away the other packages because there's essentially eight of these guys, there's ten per package. And so I only left one here for uh, showing what it was. I have some gold stabilizers for the, um, you know, space key, shift key, and um, enter keys. We have various screws, some padding for the board itself, and then it looks like extra feet for the uh, wooden case that I will show you guys in a second. First up, I'm gonna start with the PCB, or sorry, not the PCB, the back plate. So for this particular build, I'm going for all black and bamboo. So this is a carbon fiber CNC, uh, 60% DZ60 um, backplate. So it is the all the, all of the um, all of the Gateron switches that I chose are uh, plate mounted, so these work fine with this plate here. And I have a uh, switch puller in case I uh, mess up the placement. Next up, we got the DZ60 itself in here, and it is a gorgeous looking board with um, black and gold accents on the back as you can see it's a hot swap so this is the dz60 rgb v2 as you can see there or maybe not see i don't know if that's focusing properly but um it's usb c type connection and then hot swap switches which are super convenient um because soldering each individual switch can be a pain sometimes um and also you, there's, you're less likely to make a error in assembly and so we have uh, this guy here that's going to be the brain of our operation, so to say. And finally on the desk, we have this beautiful bamboo case. So it's actually a two-piece case. You take the lid off and you have the part where the keyboard will let rest. And then you could use this as a wrist rest. It looks like the height might not be quite right, so I'm going to see once it's built if this would make an adequate wrist rest and give you more information on that once I have it assembled. But um, yeah, let's get right started on this build. Alright, first thing I recommend doing is installing your standoffs. These can be a little bit tricky because the holes that they install to are not completely circular. They have like a little bit of side to side, like left and right movement that they're capable of moving. So what I tend to do is um, basically you get the screw in there and you just hand tighten the little standoff and that way it can still wiggle. And then after that, you want to test fit your back plate and that way you can you know get the alignment just perfect and so mine 
the board has, or the back plate has six locations where it would be screwed down to the PCB. And so I installed those six standoffs that go with it. Um, you can tell which ones are the standoff holes and which ones are just um, holes for screwing down the board to the PCB because the standoff holes are beveled and they're, that's because they take a particular type of screw. And so that means you want to use pretty much anything. You can use really any screw on the bottom, but um, you want to save your flathead screws for the um, holes on your uh, back plate. And then so once you have them loosely fit and you test fit the back plate to the PCB, then once all those six screws for me are screwed in, I will tighten down the um, PCB standoff screws. And that way they're locked into place right where the back plate uh, needs them to be. And so then next what we're going to do is install the stabilizers and I chose screw in stabilizers so we're not going to install the back plate just yet, we're going to actually install them onto the PCB. All right, and we're back. So these stabilizers are installed, and I would say that these are probably gonna be the most tedious part of the build, just enhanced by the fact that I chose screw-in stabilizers. If you choose the clip-in, they would take a little less longer than mine, but part of the problem is with the washer, the little plastic washer that goes on each one of those screws, you know, basically with the stabilizer here, you have with the stabilizer, you have the part that screws in, and then you have the part that clips in. The clip-in part has a bigger hole on the appropriate key, so like say for the shift key, um, you clip it into this side, and then you push down so that the uh, metal part pops through the other side, and that way you can affix the screw to it at that location. And then I put a washer on each one of those, and that just makes it a little bit more difficult to try and juggle everything as you screw them in. And then once you have them all screwed in correctly, actually I should say, before you have them all screwed in correctly, make sure you have um, basically these, uh, the stabilizers have two holes on them. And you want to make sure both of those holes are visible from the window here. So there's a window there. If you can't see both of those holes from the window, then you have, you have it installed incorrectly and it's not going to work. So make sure you install it with the holes, both holes facing the window. And then once you have it actually installed, you're going to grab one of these metal pieces included, and you're going to, see it's a lot easier when it's mounted to the board, but you're going to put it into the lowest hole, so like lowest when it's mounted on the board. And that lowest hole, once you have it in there correctly, you want to snap it down by pushing with a moderate amount of force down into these little grooves and then you'll hear it click into place and you'll know you've done it right on both of the sides of the stabilizer if when you pull up on either one it makes the other one go up with it and you don't feel like it has a moderate amount of resistance it should feel like a very smooth motion when you pull up on any of the little stabilizer bits so if you feel any resistance if it doesn't if it's not coming up you've installed it incorrectly take a second look at it and make sure you have everything uh, fixed correctly because these can be tricky. There's a lot you can mess up while installing these that will lead to um, Improperly stabilized keys. It'll make the whole thing sound goofy and act goofy if you don't have these fixed beforehand so next up I'm going to affix the uh, back plate to this as you can see it has cutouts perfectly fit for um, the stabilizers, so I'm going to install this back plate and then um, install the uh, switches themselves. All right, I just got the back plate installed via those six screws. Oh, uh, lost one there. <laughs> and um, after that's installed, you, you're good to snap in your switches. The best part about this build is that they are, uh, or the back plate, sorry, the PCB is a hot swap. So you can switch these out whenever you want. Um, so like if I wanted to change the total feel of the keyboard, the sound of the keyboard, all I gotta do is have other switches with me. And these are dirt cheap. Um, I mean, if you're a serious keyboard, uh, mechanical keyboard builder, you might spend more on switches. But um, for me, the, the cheapest ones do fine. These are like $2 for a pack of 10. Once you start looking at some of the more exotic switches, you'll end up spending a lot more than $2 per 10. But um, yeah, the, 
is like 16 bucks for 80 switches now I have plenty of spares too so basically to get these installed here you want to match these two pins to the two lower pins on your on your uh, PCB and then you just line it up also one quick tip is to make sure they're not bent at all let me focus this here too you don't want bent pins they will um, possibly lead to an imperfect contact and then you might not have your switch operating correctly so now let me just re situate here what you do is you go head on so that they're uh, it's going straight into the board and then you push down with a moderate amount of force and you will hear it snap into the PCB sometimes twice because there's two locations for it to snap and the second snap actually wasn't as pronounced but it is in there good now and if you want to do a quick spot check you can look at the very back of the hot swap switch and it might be a little hard to see but you can see the pins from the switch you just installed um, in place inside that hot swap socket so you if you don't see one of the pins there or don't see both in there you've installed it incorrectly and your board might not recognize the switch and then it won't it won't work for that particular switch so now I just have to do that a lot more times so I'm gonna cut for a second and then it will all be filled and voila so we have it all set um, with all of the uh, switches installed on the PCB this was kind of a pain actually I kept bending the pins because I kept installing them correctly best tip I can give you is to have one of these handy in case you screwed up and also check all of your pins because there was a lot of times it felt like I um, had to apply a little bit more pressure than what was necessary or didn't really make a satisfying snap and nearly every time that happened I pulled the switch out to find the pin bent so just be careful with installing yours and make sure you have all your switches installed as flush as possible it should be a satisfying click uh, into place not like a mushy um, press into place because if you have to do that you're probably bending act like actively bending the pins and that's not gonna it's not gonna recognize that key when you plug it in so now the next step would normally be to just put this inside the case and screw it down but actually I'm gonna do one thing first uh, if you'll notice on the bottom here the reset button I don't know what layout is currently mapped to this so I'm going to plug it into the computer and map my uh, layout that I planned for this so that I have the reset available in the key bindings without having to press the button because once you install this inside the case you don't have access to that button so if you don't know the current key map you don't know how to reset the board in order to uh, remap the buttons and so it makes a lot more sense to just have your uh, key map ready and like before you get the board like just you can just make it in QMK and I'll leave a um, download for the specific key map that I'm installing on here and um, a PDF of what it looks like when you install it um, what, what all the keys do I mean and so it's good to have that beforehand so that way you can flash it while when you like right when you get to this step instead of having to put it in the case and figure out how to reset it because otherwise you'll probably end up not figuring it out depending on the layout and then you'll have to take it out of the case and press the reset button so you can plug it in see that it works um, and so what you're gonna want to do is go into QMK toolbox and basically just have that open press the button down on the bottom here once you press that it'll uh, reset and enter um, the flash mode you'll see it uh, come up on QMK as um, device disk or device connected and then whatever the um, device type is so in this case mine's Amtel Corporation AT Mega 32 U4 and then once you see that message available you're good to flash it you'll hear some noises going on some some code running on the computer and once this resumes its color pattern it's effectively flashed um, what I do want to do is test all of the keys you can just use a online uh, key bind tester to make sure you have all of uh, your keys up working properly because the lights don't really mean anything if you have a pin bent you're not gonna know it until you try to press the key and it does nothing so I would recommend before you screw everything into the case uh, figure out if there's any problems with the key switches and just test all of your keys to make sure they all work properly before you screw it all in and have to redo the whole thing 
So that's just my advice. Um, the next step is going to be putting in the case once you're ready for this. And voila, we have the uh, PCB and backplate mounted together, all the switches installed, and we just mounted it to the case, the uh, bamboo case that I have here. Um, I think that what happened somewhere along the way is I lost access to one of the standoff holes, which isn't a huge deal. I still have five standoffs that I was able to screw down on here, 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 and here. But I don't know where the last one went, and it's not really a huge concern. It's it's on there good. Um, another thing to note is that when installed, this doesn't completely center the USB-C connection. So, just something to be aware of. Um, basically, we're near the end of the build. All we have left is the keycaps. And so, like I said, we got the Tex ADA keycaps. They are just a flat black, um, basically completely symmetrical. They don't have, like, any bevel to them besides... Or they don't have any unique bevel. You can install them really in any direction, that, and the dimensions will be exactly the same. Um, but these are the standard keys. I also got the Film Never Dies novelty set and this includes some extra modifiers that have unique text on them um, all things related to cameras so let's start by installing these and I will show you guys what it looks like when I'm done at long last we have the completed board all of these keys you see around it are actually spare keys um, it's a full like keyboard set, so this would cover pretty much everything on a full-size 100% keyboard. So there's obviously going to be a lot of extra keys that I didn't use. And I did have to get creative here, so forgive me, but here we are. Basically, um, it's got all the numerics standard to what they are. Um, and then we have lots of these fun um, novelty keycaps. But um, because this isn't an ANSI layout, which this key set is designed for, unless you get the extra modifier set, but that's like another $20, which I didn't want to spend. Um, I just kind of had to work around some of the awkward lengths. Like this was supposed to be a full shift on an ANSI, so you'd use the, um, you'd use the full shift uh, novelty keycap, but instead I just switched that for the caps lock that I already had. And then these two would normally be modifiers but um, because they are one U length, I had to get creative and use some more aperture keys as opposed to what I used before, um, which were these. So basically what we all got here is the aperture settings for the novelties, the film rewind, uh, film advance, is just uh, film cartridge, lens, camera. Uh, this is the, looks like focus adjust if I were to guess. Otherwise, it'd be exposure. Um, and then this looks like the shutter. This looks like an exposure meter. And then this looks like ISO. But I'm pretty far away, so I can't tell. Um, yeah, so this is what the finished product looks like. Though I love the black and bamboo. It looks great. Um, I can do a quick test with the RGB and sound so you guys can hear what this keyboard sounds like and what it looks like with the lights turned on. But yeah, I can just do a quick type test, and I think that'll be about it for this video. We can do a quick type demonstration. Um, basically, the lights don't really shine through. They're not meant to. These keycaps aren't translucent or anything. Um, but I can most likely just have the backlight off, I would imagine. Um, but I do have lots of different settings to choose from uh, that are just programmed in with QMK that you can mess around with. I, Like I said, I probably honestly won't do that much. Um, I'll probably just keep it off most of the time but um, I'll give you guys what you're looking for with a quick type test so you can hear what this keyboard sounds like So yeah, that's about it. Um, one thing I noticed is that the st space bar is gonna take a little while to break into. It's almost like the stands or the cutouts for the um, stems of the switches isn't, is like almost too much of a compression fit. So they are tending to stick. So it kind of just hovers down there 
Um, I think that after a while of using the space bar and just kind of wiggling it around and such, it should work its way into place and that shouldn't be an issue anymore. I certainly haven't noticed it on any of the other keys. Um, but yeah, it's not really a huge deal to me. I can mess with it later after the video. But that does wrap up this video pretty much. Um, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, do drop them down in the comment section and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.